Hello friends, welcome to another how to draw video. This time we'll be drawing a tree outside. I like to draw outside as it really calms me and it sort of lets you look at the environment and immerse yourself in it and uh, lose that um, need to create something perfect, in my opinion. Um, so what I'm doing now is drawing the very basic guidelines and I'm using very bright lines to indicate them. I do this because I really don't want the, pen the pencil lines to be very intrusive. I'm sorry if you cannot see them that well, but I will now go over them so that you can better see at least some of them. I'm basically drawing a tree that has two main sections for the trunk. One at the front, another one goes to the left and the back. And above it, there is a leafy area that uh, sort of <laughs> has a funny shape, actually. It's like the leaves are falling down and not spreading to the sides. Uh, you will get to see how it looks like at a later stage of the video. And now I'll begin to uh, move on to the coloring stage. I'm mixing uh, sap green and uh, burnt sienna. The colors, the specific colors aren't that important. Uh, I'm just um, mentioning them in case you'd want to use the same color scheme for your drawing or whatever you want to do. Um, but it's really not that critical. You can use whichever colors you like as long as the contrast is good and the values are relatively correct, which are the most important things basically you'll see in a few moments. So as I said, I'm mixing now the burnt sienna and I already have a sap green mixed and now I'm putting a bit of burnt sienna into the green to create a more uh, muddy look. Now you'll see I'm using both colors to paint simultaneously and because I'm using relatively wet colors, I added a lot of water, the layers uh, sort of merge. So when I draw now a, a green, uh, part and then I add the brown one it uh, sort of mixes together which creates a nice gradual movement from uh, between several colors I like to get that effect you'll notice I ran out of green uh, so I just added some more and I even like that because I got a bit of a darker green and so it was good because I think the initial layer was a bit to brown. Now because of the difference between brown and green you may notice that it's even a bit gray, uh, it gets a bit of a gray brown quality. That's because the green is opposed to, um, to the more reddish colors on the color wheel. So when I mix the two it sort of creates this effect for the color, which is good, well, you'll see in a moment. Uh, I just added a slightly darker layer on the, onto the layer I just did, just to add some contrast to it, but we will later improve it. Now you cannot really see, but I'm mixing uh, darker, I think it's burnt sienna also, and I'm making it a bit, oh no, sorry, this is, uh, yeah, it's burnt sienna and sap green, but this time I'm making it a bit darker, and using less water, more color because I'll use that to indicate the layer that's more to the back of the leafy area. And because it's more to the back, you can use, um, there are a few different methods for creating uh, depth. Um, the, the parts that are more at the back, sometimes you'd wanna use brighter colors, sort of more faded colors, especially when you draw an entire landscape. But in this example, because it's a more shaded area, I actually use darker uh, sap green and uh, burnt sienna. And I'm using that same method of painting simultaneously with two colors, just like I did on the front part. Um, now I'm adding a bit more darker green just to make a better separation between the two layers. Right now it's not that well separated. This is something I will correct by adding more color to the more front layer, which is the brighter one with the reddish tones.
Um, now what I'm doing is mixing a burnt sienna, but this time I'm making it significantly darker than before. And I will also uh, mix some blue into it because I want to get it to look a little grayish, which is actually the way the tree looked in real life. And I'm also mixing a separate blue layer because I may want to paint with both of them simultaneously. So now I'm beginning to apply the darker tone of uh, brown for the tree trunk. This trunk that I'm currently drawing, currently painting, sorry, um, is more to the back. And we will work on it a bit more just to make sure it's sent to the back uh, properly. And this one also, the part I'm painting right now is also a bit to the back. I think that it'll be clearer in a few moments. But I begin painting them with a, a little bit of a darker tone. And as you can see, it's it's subtle, but now I'm using a slightly brighter uh, burnt sienna tone for the rest of the trunk. And the bottom part of the trunk, it's actually also the connection to the, to the ground is a bit subtle, uh, but it will become more obvious the way it connects in a few moments. Um, now I added some blue to the bottom, also to shade it just like I did in the left trunk at the top part and you'll see how the the blue actually makes a really really nice effect now there is a sort of a brown reddish area just below the tree which I'm doing now I'm using some yellow ochre and even some blue I believe in there just to indicate it and I'm drawing it by tapping the the brush on the ground just creating that effect of uh, leaves it wasn't even leaf, it, it was a bit of a sandy area, but still. And I've added a bit of red into it, as you can see, into the mix, uh, which creates a very nice contrast, I think. Also, because it's surrounded by grass, I'm adding some green just around it. And what I like with sketching outside is that, and also inside, you can, it depends on your attitude, but I like to leave the options sort of open to do whatever I want. For example, in this drawing, I, I didn't really want to do a background, you know, I could have added some skies or whatever, just didn't feel like it felt like drawing the tree isolated. Uh, so you really have a freedom when drawing basically all the time, you can do whatever you want and it's it's a bit challenging to take that freedom. Um, now I'm, I'm adding the blue tone I mixed earlier and you can really notice how it sends that branch to the back, the, that part of the trunk to the back. And, and I'll do the same thing for the other one that is also a bit to the back and sort of blend it in. Now I messed up a bit, um, so <laughs> you kind of have blue on the background there, but it's okay. And also I'm adding some blue to the, more, to the more back layer of the leafy area. Uh, what I was just mentioning was a bit important uh, regarding the artistic freedom. For me, it was really hard to kind of, you know, let go and really believe that whatever comes out is good and that it doesn't have to be like perfect or imitate reality in a perfect way. Uh, so this is something you get used to when it really helps, helps you lose your outcome dependence, like it has to be perfect. So as I mentioned earlier, the frontmost layer of the leafy area didn't look so much separated from the back layer. So what I'm doing now is basically adding a bit more details using redder um, and more orange tones. And this creates A, more details, and B, more contrast. The two things that will help make it pop more forward. And the final touch will be using an ink and pen so that it really jumps forward. You can already uh, feel how it makes that layer pop a bit. Now I'm using the black color, the black, sorry, the blue color I mixed earlier to add some small details to the trunk, uh, all the, the jagged uh, shapes on it, as well as shade the very bottom part of it to create more contrast and uh, sort of an area of interest there. You can see how the blue really separates itself from the brown and creates this nice effect, especially at the bottom. And also I add a bit of blue to the part that's just below the tree trunk to sort of create a shade there. That'll also make it more, uh, have more of a contrast look. 
more of a contrast feel to it. And finally, I take out the pen, uh, Sakura Micron Pigma. Uh, this is an 04, and I go over the sort of painted area, but it's really, it depends on what you're inking. For this example, it's a leafy texture, so I don't want to have the line go too much, uh, you know, to, uh, to close it too much. I prefer to leave it very free and open and flowing and using very quick round light strokes of the pen. For the trunk, I can be a bit more, um, let's say, create more pressure and have it a bit more, you know, let's say, thicker. It also depends on the area, like I don't ink everything, almost never. Uh, so you can see also the trunk, I sort of choose the sections I want to ink. And I'll usually ink areas that are more at the bottom or more at the shaded side. This is usually how I like to, this is my approach to inking. And I like to sometimes create a variety of the lines width. This time I didn't really do that because the color sort of does most of the work and I don't want the ink um, to be too much, too, too intrusive. Now I'm adding some details to the bottom here, to the fallen leaves and the sandy area. There you have it friends, uh, the final result. I thought I'd show you more of that uh, tree itself. Um, and you can see here the final painting as well as uh, what's left of my watercolors here and the tissue and the tripod anyway i uh, hope you enjoyed this video and if you did feel free to subscribe to my channel as i'll be posting many many more videos like this one uh, so until then have an awesome week and i'll see you soon